Uh, the next step, we're going to skip over batches even though it's next up on the list, and we're going to go to transactions. I'm going to click that little plus sign, and you'll notice that you have various different transactions you can do. You have a new order, simple charge, auth only, refund, and voice authorization. I'm going to give you a quick rundown of what all of these mean. So a voice authorization is where you contact the voice auth line with the card, you give them all the information, including your merchant number, and you get an authorization. This is important if you don't have connectivity. Um, say you have a sale and you're just not in a place to where you can actually log in to take the payment, you can call the voice authorization line and get an authorization code, which is present for any transaction that you do. You put all of that information in the voice auth and it will capture it and batch it out with your batch in this system. You do need to make sure you have all of this information in order to go in here. So you do need to have the card number, expiration date, the authorization code that you received, um, as well as all of the cardholder information. So this is more of a temporary in case of emergencies, I have no connectivity, my internet's down, I have no way to get to the website, this is how I can take this order. Refund would allow you to either refund a recent transaction or you can create an open refund, um, which will allow you to process a refund to a card. Do note that um, in many cases, an offsetting sale is required to process a refund. Uh, so if you find that your settings are not allowing you to do an open refund, go ahead and give our office a call and we can assist you with that. Um, an authorization only is very similar to a voice auth with the exception that you're processing it here in the system. An authorization only means that that is all that you are doing. You are verifying that the cardholder has the funds available. Until you capture the transaction, which I will show you in batches, until you actually capture that transaction, it will not actually pay you. Auth only is a good way to say, well, I am going to loan you this equipment and there is a $500 deposit, so you're going to do an auth only to make sure that they have that. If you return the equipment within 24 hours, the fee is only $25. So you would go ahead and authorize only for the $500 to make sure it's available and you can capture it if the equipment's not returned. Um, and then later on, if they do return it, you can actually adjust the authorization only amount to the correct amount and then capture it for settlement. Simple charge is just a way to quickly charge a credit card. It will not allow you to clear at the best possible interchange. Um, it, in fact, will probably have you clear at the highest interchange available. Um, this is just very basic standard information that you would enter into any payment form that you have. We do not recommend you use Simple Charge unless you are confident it is not a business or purchase card or government issued card that you are accepting. Um, so this would be fine for consumer-based cards. Where you will more than likely live is under new order. And this, as you can see, has a lot more information that it is asking you for. There are little settings here that you can use to go ahead and customize this form a little bit. You'll notice that some of these settings were also in the settings menu. So we can have an auto populate invoice numbers, which is actually recommended. You definitely need to have an invoice number, whether or not it's a real number or it's a fake number. If you have physical invoice numbers that you want to correlate to the system, then definitely go ahead and uncheck auto populate. But if you don't have specific invoice numbers, you can just have it auto populate an invoice number. Offset value means it will skip. Uh, you have line item. Most level two, level three cards do require a weight. You do want to make sure that you have that selected as well as tax. Whether or not the tax applies is entirely up to you and where you live and where you do business and where the cardholder is and what type of product and service. Um, cash payment, I have it enabled because we will be processing a cash payment instead of a credit card here for you to see. Uh, so here is the order. So what I am going to do is I am going to add my item here, which was awesome. Oh, actually, in the product database, we need to have the product ID. 
So I am one, two, three, four. So let's go back over. Why is it not adding my order? All right. We're going to cut all of this out while I figure this out. Let's go back here. Products. See the name. I don't understand why it's not. Oh, maybe because I don't have any quantity on hand. Okay. I bet you that's what it is. I'm going to set it to virtual. So we're going to start that section all over. All right, let's go ahead and add an item. I don't know what just happened there. All right, let's go ahead and add the product that we set up before. As you can see, it's already pre-filled everything based upon what we added. Um, let's say this particular client doesn't get taxed, so I'm going to remove the tax, or I can quickly add it back um, and change it. You can either do a flat amount or a percentage. So let's go ahead and do the percentage and add the tax back in. Um, if you wanted to add a little description, you absolutely could. And then we don't have anything else on this screen. Now, keeping in mind, you definitely need to itemize every single thing because it is required for level three to itemize every single item. We're only going to do one item on this particular one. Notice it auto-populated the invoice number. Let's go ahead and give it the same PO number and the same order number because, again, all of the data that you put in here is important, whether or not it makes sense to you um, or it's something that you can utilize for your tracking. It is highly recommend that you go ahead and take care of adding all of that information. So I'm going to go ahead and do a search for the test client that we have in here. Notice all of their information's already pre-filled. It makes it so easy to go ahead and place this order. Um, if you were to add a new client in here, you could check this box and it would automatically save the client for you. So you don't actually have to save all of your products and save all of your customers before you start using the system. You can use it right out of the box and add all of that stuff as you go along. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. Now here is where you could swipe if you're a retail and you had one of the swipers attached to your computer, um, which is great if you can, but a lot of clients are unable to do that and they need to do this as a moto or as a transaction that's done either through the phone or um, through the web. If it's through the web, then all of this information would actually be collected by your shopping cart or your e-commerce checkout page and that information would be used through the API keys that we looked at before into the system and you wouldn't actually need to do any of this um, but because and here you could actually save the credit card if you wanted to here is where you can also authorize only if you just wanted to maybe check to make sure and you needed to verify shipping and add that later you could click this to authorize the base amount come back to the client and say it's $50 shipping. You could go back to the order screen and add in the actual shipping cost that's associated with it. It won't pull up because I don't have um, it set up in the inventory. But I'm going to go ahead and do a payment here as cash uh, just so that you can see how it works. I'm going to click exact. You can put the different amounts here. Say if I put five dollars it actually tells me exactly oh I added it up it added it up 
Let's do that again. Let's start back at credit. For this one, we're just going to run cash just so you can see how the process goes through. Uh, so we have here that the total is $1.07. Say we were handed a five dollars, it will actually tell you exactly how much change to process, which is great. And then you hit process, and you get a lovely little confirmation here, where you can print the receipt. You can also email the receipt. You can do a new transaction, or you can click on Batch Manager, which is where I want to take you.